What's up guys, I'm Tony Woodark. I'm a wedding photographer out of Southern California. I always say I'm a wedding photographer out of Southern California and then I talk about shooting film and talk about street and landscapes and all that. Today I'm gonna to talk about how I shoot weddings. So I'm gonna go from preparation, how I go through the day, and then kind of my post process. I wrote a four part series on my website that I'll link to in the description below. It's basically really well written. No, it's not. I'm not a great writer, but I basically put all the same information in this four part series blog on my site. But right now I'm just gonna talk through it quickly. Some people like watching videos more than reading, so I'm one of those people, so let's jump into video. First up, preparation. Preparation's key. I look in, at wedding preparation in three parts. One, preparing yourself with the clients. Two, preparing yourself with the coordinator. And then three, preparing your gear. Preparation with the clients is super important. I send over a questionnaire to them using HoneyBook. I'll link my HoneyBook below. You can get 50% off if you don't already use HoneyBook. Highly recommend it. Anyways, I send a questionnaire over to them. I put my entire questionnaire on my blog. You guys can copy and paste it. You can modify it to work for you, but there's a lot of really good questions on there to make sure that you're on the same page with your clients. I think setting expectations before you even go into the day is really important and that to me is the number one key to success is getting the family photo list ahead of time, knowing if there's any specific photos or details that they want that you might not discuss the day of, you have a list of that going into the wedding and so you're prepared to just nail it and not have to worry about it the day of. You, you know going into it, okay, I wanna get a shot of grandpa's watch. I wanna get a shot of um, the entrance table. Those little things that you may or may not get on the day of, it's really important to know that ahead of time and let your clients, when they're not flustered with a million things, sit down and answer those questions so that you're prepared. Next is preparation with the coordinator. So I have the coordinator send me the timeline ahead of time. I look over it, make any adjustments. Sometimes I need a little bit more time for family photos. Um, there's not enough time for traveling to and from first look or different places. So. Um, working back and forth with the coordinator and giving them information ahead of time is super key because you guys want to be on the same page. You need to be working in unison with your coordinator and you need to have a realistic timeline going into the day because if it's unrealistic from the start, you're going to be screwed because timelines go quick and things change and so you need to make sure that you've looked it over ahead of time. Next is preparing your gear. Obviously getting all your batteries charged, having all your cards formatted, making sure you have all your lenses. Just packing up all your gear and looking over everything. I do that the night before, and then I kind of the next morning wake up and just triple check everything. And so it's just really important to make sure that you have all your gear together and ready. And backup gear too. If you don't have backup gear, then you shouldn't be shooting weddings, really. Okay, so that's preparation for the day of. Coming into the day, I typically get there and I shoot details first. So I have whoever the bride put together all the details, the rings, the invites. Um, florals, any of those things that I can get together in one place, her shoes, her dress. And I usually go in, say hi to everyone, and then start shooting that. My second shooter will go and shoot the groomsmen and get those photos while I focus on the bride and the details. I like to bring some own, my own styling mats, but I also like to use different um, backgrounds or materials that are just true to the scene. So if there's a cool marble countertop or there are some you know different features that are, would make it for a good background for the details i'd rather use that than my styling mat but i have the styling mat just in case i try to find some even light and just shoot all those details and i usually use a 50 millimeter if i have it or i'll use a 35 millimeter just something a little wider so i can stand over and get everything in the scene at the same time next up i'm doing the getting ready shots so I like to get a couple candids of just the bridesmaids interacting with the bride, the um, bride getting her makeup done, whatever. Just getting those kind of natural candid moments and them talking, laughing, whatever. And then I might move them or turn off all the lights and use window light. And so I get a couple kind of more staged getting ready photos so that I make sure that I really got some beautiful light really nice portraits and then if i have time i'll also grab the bride if she's ready or the groom whoever i'm shooting at the time and i'll get them to some really nice light and get a couple portraits of them while their makeup and hair and everything is perfect before the wind kicks in or they start sweating or whatever just as soon as they're finished with all of the hair and makeup just getting a couple portraits of them 
perfect would be awesome. That's that's usually what I try to do. And then I have my second shooter get the groom um, a couple portraits too. I'm gonna shoot portraits of them by themselves again later, just in different light, different backgrounds, et cetera. But it's good just to have those locked away because you never know. It's, with wedding photography, it's always about like, if you have time now, get those shots now, and then you can always get them again later, but you can't make up stuff later. So you gotta try to get as much as you can when you have time. With those portraits, I'm, I love an 85 millimeter lens or a 50 for portraits. So if I'm shooting digital, I'll use my 85 1.4, the Canon um, image stabilized one, the L. I love that lens, that's probably my favorite portrait lens. And then if I'm shooting film, I'm using the Contact 645 with the 80 millimeter lens, which is a 50 millimeter equivalent, which is just like the best portrait lens ever. So those are two of the lenses I'll switch between. And then I also usually have another camera with a wider lens, like a 35 on it, just to get more full body portraits. Then we go into first look. I love to just kind of calm them down and tell them each separately what's gonna happen. So it kind of relieves the nerves. And then I also let them know, you guys just enjoy this moment, talk to each other, take a couple minutes. I'm gonna be shooting photos, but don't worry about me. Because I think when I haven't said that in the past, the couples, they like do the first look and then they look right at me and are like, what are we supposed to do? And I don't wanna be the center of that moment. I want this moment to be about them. And so I kind of coach them going into it. Hey, take this time, enjoy it. And I'll I'll jump in when I need to. Or and so that's really helped just give kind of more natural just reactions and hopefully someone cries or they're smiling or they're excited or whatever. Hopefully there's some sort of emotion and I'll be shooting um, a wide lens and a telephoto lens. And so the wide lens is just setting the scene and kind of watching them come together. And then the telephoto, I'll get real close to try to get those reactions, get that emotion. I think those really tight shots can show a lot of emotion really well. Then prior to the ceremony, um, there's that kind of like 30 minute awkward wait where you hide the bride and groom. Um, you can't really get photos of them because they're usually in like a dark, weird space. And so you're just kind of left with 30 minutes that so you can't really do much. I will typically try to get some photos of something. So I'll get the ceremony site. If people aren't sitting down yet, I'll try to get those or details around the ceremony site. Um, and then if the reception's in the same place, I'll see if there's any tables that are done for the reception. Um, if there's any details that I can get of the surrounding area or anything, I'm just running around and trying to shoot those. And then if there's any kids playing or kind of just any like guest photos I can get during that time, I'll try to get that. And then I'm really setting up for the ceremony and talking to my second shooter about where they're gonna be, where I'm gonna be. If there's a videography team, making sure they don't set up the tripod in a bad spot or I'm not getting in their way or whatever and just making sure that I'm in good communication with everyone. Also being prepared for immediately following, getting those uh, couples photos and family photos. So having a spot scouted out for where I'm gonna do those, what the light's gonna be like at that time. I use an app called Sunseeker. So it tells you where the sun is in the sky and where it's gonna be at a certain time. And so I know if I'm gonna lose the sun behind the mountains or it's gonna go behind these trees or whatever. And so I can prepare where the light's gonna be at a certain time of the day. Then the ceremony, it's pretty standard. I kind of stand up at the top of the altar, get the bride or groom or whoever, groom and groom, bride and bride coming down the aisle and making sure that I'm getting those. And then I usually turn over and get the groom's reaction to that. And then I'm also trying to get shots of the parents and different people and, and if there's emotion happening, I'm trying to capture those. I'm also having my second shooter really focus on those moments too. I love them being able to focus on the candidates because I'm focused on what's happening that are like the key moments. So I'll get my kind of stock photos um, standing in the back wide angle of the of the ceremony with them up at the top and so I can kind of set the scene. Um, if my second shooter is able to get even wider and go really far back, they'll get that shot. And then I try to go from one side and get kind of the groom's face and then from the other side trying to get the bride's face and trying to just get kind of a mix of photos. Once I've got those, there's still usually five or 10 minutes of the ceremony that's talking and you don't really need to shoot the same exact scenes that you just shot. And so I try to get a little bit more creative with the shots. Can I shoot through people? Can I get really far back? Um, can I get a unique angle? 
just because I have that time, I wanna use it to try to get some even more unique shots. I'll take my phone out and do a reflection, using that different time just to get some more unique photos. And then I'm setting up for that first kiss. So I'll be right down the aisle, um, working with the videographer or my second shooter and kind of knowing what lens everyone's shooting and then get the first kiss. And then I, I always love that recessional shot of them coming down the aisle. So with that one, I'm usually wide with a 35 and I switch over to AI servo. And so I can get them continuous focus as they're walking down the aisle. And so I'm just shooting a bunch and trying to get them in focus as they're coming towards me. So that's kind of how I shoot the ceremony. Then we go straight into bridal party and family photos. Um, I like to shoot again 35 and 85 or wide and a little bit more telephoto and I like to have both those shots. So for family photos, it's showing the from the feet all the way above the head and make sure you leave space on the side so that um, your client can crop the photo into an 8x10 or a 5x7 or whatever. And then I also like to get a really tight shot with um, like an 85. And so it's just kind of like shoulders up. And so you have both of those shots um, for all the family portraits. And this can be a really stressful and tedious and crazy time of the day. And so having that list ahead of time, having their names and you're, you're the one in control and you're going through your list, people will be like, oh, I wanna get this group or whatever. I always tell them after we're done with my list, we can get whatever groupings you want. And they'll usually bail and go get drinks because they don't wanna wait. That's fine, but I, I need to go through the list that I worked on with the clients ahead of time, and then we can do other groupings. So you need to be in control and assertive in running that. As creative photographers, we wanna do the fun portrait photos. We don't wanna do the boring family portraits, but the boring family portraits are the ones that are gonna be printed, so they are super important. Like That's what your the mom and dad of the couple is gonna print out, and so, those are the photos that you need to actually make sure they're sharp, make sure you get um, everyone with their eyes open. You know, just, you need to put in the effort and make sure they're as good as you can because those are the ones that are gonna be printed. And those are the ones that people are gonna look back on and they wanna see their grandparents that now have passed away or whatever. And you know, this might be the only photo they have of all of their family together by a professional photographer. So it is really important, although it's not the most fun part of the day, having a plan and, and realizing the importance of it, I think um, it's really important. Then you go into the best part of the day, bridal portraits. So prior to even showing up to the wedding, I've scouted out a couple spots. I've walked around the venue. I've looked with the Sunseeker app to see where the light's gonna be. I'm, I've worked with the coordinator to make sure that this is like golden hour if possible. And now I've got the couple and I've got hopefully about 30 minutes and I can go do some portraits with the couple and try a different, a couple different places. So I wanna get different scenes, different backgrounds, and just try a bunch of different stuff. And so I kinda of have my go-to poses that I'll go with, or I try to give them kind of prompts so that they can just interact with each other and get some natural photos. And then once I've gotten what I feel like I'm good with, if I still have time, then I'll try to get even trickier and more creative and just get some really unique stuff. Um, maybe I'll do like a slower shutter and get some motion blur or I'll pull out my phone and get a reflection. Um, you could use prisms or some unique lighting or whatever, but make sure that you've got the go-to photos first and then, and then do your creative shots after that. And then also making sure that you have a plan with your second shooter. What do you want them to get that you're not getting? Um, whether that's backing up the photos that you're getting or just getting really unique angles. So I'm always having my second shooter get those details of like the hands or the flowers or a, um, a side angle when I'm on the front end or I'm, on a, I'm at the front end angle. I'm at the front angle? I don't even know what it's called. I'm straight on angle and I want my second shooter to get the side angle or whatever, or I'm shooting close up and they're shooting wide and just making sure that you're communicating that ahead of time so that you guys know what you're doing going into it. Then we get into reception. So you're gonna wanna know what lighting setup you're gonna wanna use. I typically have one on-camera flash and then if I'm gonna set up some tripods with some off-camera flash, I'll have the other camera with a trigger controlling that. Um, I love having just one camera with an on-camera flash always ready because as you walk around during the reception, people are gonna be like, oh, can I get a group photo? And you, you wanna be able to have one camera ready that you can just boom, get that group photo. 
and then using the off-camera flash or another camera with on-camera flash. I like to use MagMods products, so I've been using the MagBox, the MagSphere's, MagGrids. I love all their products. To me, speed is probably the most important thing, and so just the fact that they're magnets and they're well-made and they're super easy to use, I just love those, so definitely look into those products. That's pretty much it. I'll make sure that I have everything checked on off on my shot list. Maybe I forgot to get a photo of grandpa's watch or whatever. I can go run up to the groom, get him to pose a photo or take off the watch or whatever. And so I'm before I'm even close to leaving, I'm gonna look through that list again, make sure I got every single photo. And if for some reason we weren't able to get a photo, I'm gonna go up to the couple and be like, hey, we never got a photo with Aunt Susie. And I'm gonna let them say we don't need it or whatever and kind of give me that verbal uh, commitment prior to me leaving. Or they're like, yeah, let's go get it and we'll go find Aunt Susie, get that photo or whatever. And so it's just really important to set those expectations and continue to uh, meet those expectations as the day goes on. Then after the wedding, as soon as I get home, I back up all those photos. So I back them up on two different hard drives and then I keep all the photos on the SD cards until I deliver the gallery. I don't wanna go into the whole calling process and all of that. It's, it's pretty in depth and there's a lot of steps to it, but you can check out my blog and you'll see how I go about it. Um, I think creatively the biggest thing that I focus on for wedding photography and what I feel like makes a good gallery is having a wide lens and a, and a close up lens and switching between those throughout the entire day. So getting those wide shots and even wider shots to set the scene and then getting those really tight details of like um, materials and fabrics and emotion um, really tight and then and then your kind of standard middle shots. I think having that wide range of, of varying focal lengths it really adds depth and really good storytelling to your wedding. That's that's really how I go about it. And then I'm trying to tell a story too. How do I kind of show you the weather? How do I show you um, the vibe of the day? How do I show you kind of the details and things that they were drinking? What were the cocktails that they were having? And I try to make sure that I'm using those photos to tell a story throughout the day. And then when you get to the album, it's just like the perfect like start to finish day. So that's it. I hope that was helpful. That was just me talking about how I shoot a wedding. Uh, I, this wedding preparation for photographers was my most viewed blog last year. I think over 5,000 people viewed this blog and it's basically just my questionnaire of what I send to a client before their wedding. I had a friend who was like, hey, you should sell that thing. And I know other photographers who sell that. It's amazing. To me, I just want every wedding photographer to go do as good of a job as they can. And so I offered it to everyone for free. So I highly recommend to you, if you don't have a questionnaire or you wanna make your questionnaire better, maybe mine's better, go check, take a look at that and look at the rest of the articles and hopefully they inspire you. Hopefully you gather some information that you didn't have before. There's even more information than I was able to cover in this video. If that was helpful, please like this video, please comment, please share it. Um, and if you don't already, please subscribe. I hope that this was helpful and I appreciate you guys listening. Thanks.